All right, let's bring in Jamie McLennan today for Pro-Am Sports. Noodles, are you following Otani overseas? You know what? You guys are harder harder on him than I am because <laughs> uh, as, as much as it's nice to see Joey Votto, the guy stepped in, on a bat in the dugout and rolled his ankle. So, oh. I mean, you know, it. it um, I mean, yes. Did they dodge a bullet, $700 million? I mean, the, the jury's out. Because Justin Turner, I love the guy, but, I mean, he's not <laughs> Joey Otani either. Yeah. So they, they went the Turner slash potential Joey Votto route. Uh, I mean, that that means they that Vladdy better wake up and get going here and stop hitting into double plays like he did all season last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll always have Otani Jet Day, oh, we'll which was can. a stunner for us. <laughs> I can't jet, even yeah. imagine what it was like in Toronto that day. That must have been amazing. Try doing a show live when that <laughs> was happening. It was embarrassing. You're literally like, okay, there's a jet, and, and it's flying across the North, Ameri- Mar- North American plane. And then we realize it's the Dragon's Den guy. Yeah. So we had him on the show the next day. So, oh, man, that's, uh, that's classic. I love it. Uh, all right, Edmonton Oilers last night. I don't know. Like, Noodles, it's easy for us to just say a win is a win, and and they are. But you let Montreal be the better team for probably about 40 minutes of that game last night. But in the end, you get the power play in overtime, and you eventually get it done. So how should people view that victory over the Habs? Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll go with the a win is a win, and you take it, but they didn't play well. Yeah. And, you know, they weren't crisp right from the drop of the puck. Passes were off. You know, body language was was weird. Like, they just to me, it just looked like a a, a night in March where they're trying to get through. Uh, you know, a, a, a Tuesday night in March where, you know, they know they're a playoff team now. It'll be interesting to see, though. They should be motivated to see if you can try and catch Vancouver. But that being said, you know, at, at the end of the day, I, I feel like they're looking at the lineup and going, we can beat this team even if we play half-assed, and they did play a half-assed last night. McDavid gets the goal early on. They're up 2 nothing. I, I thought they fell asleep in the third period, and good on Montreal for not quitting. Uh, you know, Gooley's going to be a player. that They've got some good young players there. Um, but that being said, it, it took them a while. I thought their power play was off. You know, you get a four-minute power play. They had some chances, but it, it just the crispness was not there. Luckily, they did have a few guys that looked sharp. I thought Ekholm had a really nice game. Um, outside of that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to reach to see who else yeah. looked really sharp. There just wasn't much last night. Noodles, um, a, a bit of personnel shuffling uh, from, from Chris Knobloch. Uh, how much, or if at all, do you attribute to to just what you were saying? I mean, I'm looking at this, and, and you know, positives last night, I... <laughs> McDavid, you know, another, uh, you mentioned Ekholm. I thought he had a real tidy game. We're not talking about Troy Stetcher this morning. Well, I was going to ask a good, about Stetcher. I mean, yeah. A good I, thing, I but uh, is it a bit of that personnel jumbling or just one of those nights? I mean, again, they you don't have to bring your A game some nights. You can beat these teams and you take the two points and move on. It was. And, you know, I think Knobloch does a good job uh, identifying who's going early on and trying to find them an extra shift here or there. Like, I, I think he's done a really good job that way in managing the team. Um, you know, again, he jumped on a moving train and I know the train was headed in the wrong direction, but he, you know, they turned it around and, you know, all season long, I've been really impressed with his subtle tweaks, you know, last night moving guys around. I think, again, I come back to it. There were just plays that were sloppy, you know, and, and turnovers inside their own zone and, and against a good team. I know that's what the fan base is saying against a, a good team that's on their game. That's going to end up in the back of your net. But that wasn't the case last night. You know, I thought Pickard made a couple good saves. I, 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 I thought, you know, at critical times, they were like, okay, we're going to bear down here and get it done. But you could just tell it was a Tuesday in March where it was like, you know, we're playing Montreal and half the fan base is in the building, which I, I thought I saw a lot of red shirts, which, oh, I, yeah. yep. which, which is rare. I'll be honest, it's rare for me. Now, I see Maple Leaf jerseys everywhere. In, in opposing buildings. But I always feel like Edmonton holds up pretty well with o- other opposing teams. But last night, for some reason, I, I saw a lot of red jerseys, like a lot, which was maybe they were buying up the lower bowl and that's what you were seeing <laughs> on TV. And I was watching it on my computer in a hotel room in Boston last night. So, um, you know, it, it, it seemed like Montreal, they do. Original six team travels well. But it was just one of those games where 
Uh, they got through it last night. And their, their best players weren't their best, but they were still good enough to deliver the win. Eric had mentioned Stetcher there briefly. And the last time he got yep. in, it was Ekholm was sick. They kind of threw him in on the left side. Last night, he got to play right side. He got to play alongside Darnell Nurse. I thought at times that they did look like two guys playing their first game together from a positional standpoint. But outside of that, I mean, Eric said we're not coming in today and being like, Matt, Stetcher blew it a couple of times. Like, I think he would have to be pretty happy with last night's game. Yes, yeah. and a little scare there. He 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 hobbled down the, yeah. the alleyway there. I thought you know TD uh, went down to check on him, but I I I like this game. It was efficient. You know he's not. You know when they added him, they added him to be you know a, a veteran guy that can come in and out. I think Dayarnay has has solidified himself as a guy that they want in the lineup nightly. But if there is an injury, he's a trusted guy that is versatile. Because he can move the puck, he can skate. He does play bigger than he is because he's not a big guy, but he's not shy to be physical. So he is the kind of perfect, versatile player that you know on a value contract that can add it. You know, if you weren't big game hunting, if you weren't getting Tanev or Hannafin or guys like that, I think Stetcher was the perfect complement to add at the deadline. And you know, let's be honest, you look at man games lost. They're, they're top of the league as far as uh, guys on the back end. I think yeah. going into last night's game, it, they'd lost like four or five games uh, from defensemen. So, you know, health is going to be a challenge if you're going to go on a deep run in the playoffs. You do need guys that can play, and Stetcher's a guy that can play and won't hurt you for the most part. I like him. Jamie McLennan with us on the show this morning. Thought Montembeau held up pretty well last night. What do, what, do they, what do the Habs have in between the pipes there as they try to take a step forward at some point? Well, I think they've got a good young tandem. And what I, I mean, Montembeau's not 22. Caden Primo is that. But, you know, I, I think Montembeau has a chance to be a good tandem goalie. I don't see him as a standalone. He's not a superstar. He's not a 60. You know, he's not a Demko. He's not a Markstrom. But what he is is a good goaltender. And they like Caden Primo. I think Primo's very raw, but he's got skill. So in a retool, rebuild situation, they're giving him, they're trying to protect him a little bit, but they're giving him some starts where, you know, they're testing him and, and seeing how he holds up. Montembeau, I re- what I like about him is his, is his demeanor. He's got a really nice demeanor in the net. He doesn't get too rattled. He, you can see the way his body language, he carries it. You know, if he gets scored on, he's fine. So I, I think he's really found a, a home in Montreal uh, again, I think he's more of a tandem guy, but he is their number one right now, and he's going to carry the bulk. Jimmy, the Vegas Golden Knights playoff team, um, four and six in their last 10, 79 points, three up right now, a game in hand on the Wild. The Wild have been playing some pretty good hockey, kind of up and down, same with the Blues. Uh, you like Vegas holding on to this thing? I mean, it, it looks like the Preds are really running away with uh, wild card one, but uh, your thoughts on Vegas uh, in this I don't know what you would call it, second half of season, but this slow kind of slide uh, post-deadline. Are they a playoff team? I think they are a playoff team. They're just too good as far as how well they're coached, the pedigree. Um, You know, they're starting to get healthier. They are healthy in net. And, you know, I did a Vegas game the other day and and talked to Bruce Cassidy, and he said, you know, health is the biggest thing. Eichel's just come back. Um, you know, they have had at one point, I think they had six guys from Henderson in their lineup. So that is going to be a challenge anytime you have that much injuries and that many new faces and turnover. And the game I called was the first game they'd had actually six healthy D where they had all six of their guys in. So it has been a challenge for them. Uh, Nashville is insane what they've been doing every oh, night. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I was in Nashville. I think I talked to you guys a couple of weeks ago. I was like, this team just refuses to lose, and they're a collection of, of good players that play together, and you know they've got a superstar goaltender, in my opinion, in Saros, and they've got a superstar defenseman in yeah. uh, Yossi, and outside of that, they've got a bunch of really good players and, and that play hard, and Andrew Burnett's found something there with that group, and it's, you know, you always talk about uh, a moment that galvanized. Everyone's talked about how they canceled the- The sphere the trip, conference. yeah. Yeah, the yeah. sphere. Um, which, I mean, I went to that concert. I thought it was great. Uh, uh, side note, uh, and I don't, I don't do you know, drugs and all that, but if you were on <laughs> drugs at that thing, that, it's crazy. The, it the is. The moving parts in that, that sphere. But that's a side story. Um, but, yeah, that's been their galvanizing moment. 
and Nashville is is been has taken off. I think Vegas gets it, but I don't. I wouldn't sleep on St. Louis either. That team, Jordan Bennington, if you look at his goals saved above expectation, standing he's on right his at head. the top of the yeah. league. So he's 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 helped deliver them to be close. So it'll be interesting here down the stretch. Noodles, let's just end with the side note there because uh, we're giving away a trip to Vegas right now. So we went down. We did some shows from Vegas when the others were down there. Actually, Super Bowl week, and we went to the Sphere. And we just went for like the Earth show, and we were up on the second. We were in that like second four level, level four, well, level four, yeah. whatever. Like we were kind of up near the top, and uh, it was rattling us. Like, you and I, was, you and I were walking around like seniors. Yeah, we, we, we were we, holding we were on like, to every holding uh, on to things. Like yeah. it was, uh, it was wild. It is wild, and it's jarring because you know, for me, I you know, I I, I got good seats. My buddy is one of the head of marketing there, so he like. We were in a luxury box, kind of okay. at that second level. Yeah. And then, but he's like, okay, after the first set, let's take you down side stage to see you two kind of live there. So we we kind of did like a whole tour during it. But as you're like, as you're there, like I, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but it's like it's it's the the wall, it's like it's like caving in and stuff like that. Yeah. I said to my buddy, if we were like, you know, on <laughs> mushrooms or something, we'd be in a, oh. in a fetal position. Yeah. It was insane, uh, uh, the the graphics and all that. But it was awesome. Uh, I can't wait for the next bands to go in there. U2 is obviously legendary. but it, um, It's going to be cool to see some and, other bands roll in, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of yeah. older guys that just stand there, right? But it yeah. was it was an awesome experience. It was so cool. And, uh, you know, that place is – it seems like it's the hottest place right now in America to go watch a concert. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was even, even the Earth Show. I was like, this is pretty sweet. Oh, it was like, wild. Yeah, you was had good. air blowing out from like the the seats. Yeah, the like, time was just, all the yeah. senses were <laughs> was, going off. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whoever wins this Vegas trip, you definitely gotta go check out the Sphere. It was, uh, it's awesome <laughs> to see. Uh, Noodles, we'll catch up with you next week, man. Thanks for the time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.